What's up nerds, Justin here with a breakdown of an incredible movie theory. Mission Impossible is the exhilarating film franchise that started off from humble beginnings on the small screen back in 1966. Thanks to Tom Cruise, it's now a juggernaut franchise that goes toe to toe with James Bond himself. Now back in 1996 with director Brian De Palma and a producing Tom Cruise, no one would have predicted the heights that it would reach or the pattern that would emerge. Now you see, Mr. Cruz has a bit of a trait that you might have noticed. A trait that indicates something unique about each film via his hair. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to examine Tom Cruise's hair and unravel the intricate web of the Mission Impossible series. The year was 1996 and Tom Cruise produced and took a very hands-on role in the controversial first installment of Mission Impossible. Unlike today's films, this one was more of a psycho thriller than action adventure. Tom Cruise introduced us to the new franchise hero, Ethan Hunt. His foil would be revealed to be former TV series good guy, Agent Phelps. The character, who was played by John Voight in the film, was met with some strong emotional responses from fans, probably the negative ones, as to how the film treated the beloved character. Cruz's hunt was more codebreaker and spy than action hero in this first film. His short buzz cut indicates not only the character's professionalism, but no frills approach. His round glasses indicated the more cerebral side of the character as it tried to give us an intricate electronic thriller. We saw email change and spy glasses and so much more. The most thrilling would be the start of the tradition of an insane stunt per film. And in this one we had two. The incredible CIA breach, crews dangling in fashionable glasses trying not to be detected in a CIA vault. The money was on that to bring in audiences. <laughs> Literally, Cruz used coins in his shoe to keep balance, not to make him taller. Now, that's actually pretty clever. There was also an insane train sequence that only happened because Cruz charmed the train owners in real life. If we got short hair Cruz, we knew that we were getting something different. The round glasses would never be seen again. However, every odd number Mission Impossible film we would get, it'd have short hair. Uh, for a while anyway. Cut to four years later, we would get a new Mission Impossible film and a series low point in some minds, Mission Impossible 2. Directed by John Woo and story by Star Trek Next Generation producers Ronald D. Moore, who also did Battlestar Galactica later, and Brandon Braga. So in this one, we got a unique entry, no psycho thriller, mystery gone. Instead, what we got was excess wild action. And you could tell it would be wild by one indication, Mr. Cruz's hair. Tom Cruise went long haired for the first time in series history. Mission Impossible 2 was shot in Australia and features an insane motorcycle chase with stunts to match. There is a callback early in the film to the previous entry with Tom Cruise dangling from a helicopter into a secret facility. This film was not quite as gadget heavy with Cyclops' Oakleys being turned into video glasses being the most unique gadget next to the special face mask. Wu lived for excess and Cruise brought it. Tom performed well on a motorcycle with a badass coat and sunglasses, throw into martial arts and you get a high octane action movie. Tandy Newton, way back before she was in Westworld, did pretty well here. Bing Rames, who played Luther, returned from the first film and would be a constant in the franchise like Cruz's ever-changing hair. Mission Impossible 2 is a one of a kind in the franchise, and even though some might call it a low point, it's a damn memorable one at that. Now the film franchise would then take an incredible six year break. Six years. Now. Who better to reinvigorate it than Mr. Reboot King himself, J.J. Abrams? Mission Impossible 3 would create the formula and tone that would define the franchise going forward. With a powerhouse cast once again and more grounded action, you can tell that they meant business. How do we know this? Cruz has got short hair again! Gone was the wild mane, and yet we get a neat yet spiky haircut. Cruz's Ethan Hunt was married between films, something that would not last after all. Name me one spy who manages to stay married, honestly. Regardless, Mission Impossible 3 gives us exotic locations, a menacing villain, a memorable highway chase scene, and Ethan walking away happy. Or so it seemed. Mission Impossible 3 may not have had the death-defying stunts of its predecessors, 
but it gave us a return to espionage. Simon Pegg has now joined Ving Rhames as a regular, and we enjoyed the grounded action. Much like Cruz's haircut, it proved being less flashy is memorable. And then, guess what happened? Cruz's hair grew out again, and we got one of the best films in the series, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Directed by Brad Bird, not a name that you would have associated with live action, especially back then, as Bird helmed some of the best classic Simpson episodes and given us both Incredibles films. When asked about The Incredibles, he said he was inspired by old spy comics with gadgets and intrigue. So who better than Bird to team up with Cruz and Abrams to give us one of the top entries in the Mission Impossible franchise. Along with Cruz's longer hair, we also get some freaking awesome moments. From the frantic opening to the nail-biting missile end, the film is insane. Even more insane is Tom Cruise scaling the world's tallest building. When that hair has grown out, so is his bravery. The Burj Khalifa sequence leads to a dizzying chase through a sandstorm. We even get Jeremy Renner joining the series. There's too much to break down with this film. If you haven't seen it, make sure that you make it a priority. At this point, the Mission Impossible film franchise looks ready to be a mega blockbuster. And it's the next entry that would prove the Mission Impossible franchise was ready to surpass the Bond franchise. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Tom Cruise returned to a short haircut and oddly, still a bit of a daredevil. The movie opens with him dangling off a plane. <laughs> yeah, and he did that for real. We, of course, get the two veterans, Bing Rhames and Simon Pegg, and Jeremy Renner joins for his second installment. Also, Alec freaking Baldwin joins the franchise. And one more wild card, Rebecca Ferguson. Finally, a female badass to foil Ethan Hunt. We even got our first look at the Syndicate, which had its roots in the 66 series, who definitely fits in and was better executed than 007 Spectre. Cruz also finally gets to do another motorcycle chase. This film has it all. Gunplay, stunts, exotic locations, espionage, uh, action, sexual tension, all-star cast, and a menacing villain. There is a reason director Christopher McQuarrie would be the only director who would go on to do two Mission Impossible films. He was just that damn good. And now we are onto the latest film and something odd has happened. Tom Cruise's hair has not grown out for a subsequent film. It's also the shortest we've ever waited for an MI film with an only three year wait. Much like his ankle, the pattern has been broken. Check the links below to see what I thought of the latest entry, Mission Impossible Fallout. Mission Impossible is a juggernaut in the Hollywood franchise spy business. And whether his hair is short or long, if Tom Cruise continues to play Ethan Hunt, we are in for a wild and entertaining time. Thanks guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and if you like this video, be kind and smash that like button. Catch you around folks and until next time, I will see you nerds at the movies.